and welcome to this video. I'd like to start a new series on importing, exporting, and rendering objects into Blender. Uh, Blender is an extremely useful tool and it works pretty well with, between SolidWorks and FreeCAD and other parametric modelers. Uh, I'm doing this as a collaboration with All Visuals for You. Uh, All Visuals for You is a great channel. Uh, if you haven't already, go go watch some of the uh, videos and I, I think you'll agree that there's some great quality and some great material on that channel. Hit the subscribe button on there as well. So All Visuals for You has rendered me up this bottle and put it into an STL format. Uh, if you aren't clear on how to do that, you simply say File, Export, and then of course you have to select in the tree what you wish to export and you can export it into a number of files. So STL and VRML 2.0 are the two formats that we'd be concerned with exporting because those are the ones that you can import into Blender. All Visuals for You has a tutorial actually on how to model this bottle. That should be pretty interesting and you should be able to find it in this playlist. So now that we have this bottle in an STL format, let's import this into Blender. So I'm gonna start by opening Blender. Of course, uh, you can install Blender off of blender.org. And when we open it up, this is the screen that we see. Assuming that you haven't used Blender before, some of this user interface may look a little bit complicated. So let's go through it. I can push the T, like Tango key, and uh, that will toggle this transform menu on and off. This menu is concerned with the physical objects that we see here. You can import a cube like this. You can import planes and uh, spheres and shapes and all, all kinds of things. So that's what this menu is concerned with. I can, all put, I can also push the N key and it can toggle this menu on and off as well. Uh, this menu is simply an, is an extension. It can actually be found on this menu here as well. Um, so <clears throat> over here you have um, two menus. Uh, this, this is called the outline window, or I think of it as the history tree. So I have um, all, some objects in my 3D graphics display here. And if I click on one, it highlights. So I have my camera over here, I have a cube, and I have a lamp or a light. I can also select these from the graphics display by hovering my mouse over it and right clicking. Um, so that's how I can deal in, uh, in this display over here. Now I also have uh, what we would say is the properties window, which takes up basically the rest of this uh, right hand menu. The properties are uh, dealing with the appearances and the properties are related to these 3D objects. So I can right click on this cube and apply a material and apply certain textures. Uh, that's an extremely useful menu, and this is how we can get um, near or photorealistic renders from Blender. Finally, down here you have a timeline window, and this, this um, what we're looking at here is only going to be useful for animations, which we probably won't get into, but you can change the um, what we have over here using this little menu here. So if I want to do a UV map edit, I can simply go to UV image editor. Likewise, um, if I want to edit nodes, which we will be getting into, I can go to my node editor. So I can change what uh, interface I'm looking at from this point right here. This bottom menu uh, is concerned with changing my 3D view. So I can you know, choose rendered and get, kind of get a rendered image of what I'm looking at. And if you see the brightest face of this cube is on top, the next brightest is here, and the darkest face is over here. And that begins to make sense because if I go back to my solid view, I've got a light, which most of the light would go on top, and then here, and then the least amount of light would go here. And I can rotate my view in this 3D graphics window by using the center mouse button. So this is a quick overview on how we, uh, <clears throat> on how we go over some of these menus. Um, and how do I import parts? Well, the first thing I want to do is get rid of my cube because I don't want it in my final render. So I'll right click on my cube and select delete. And my cube is gone. I can hit control Z or Z and just put the push the delete button and click on OK as well. So two ways to delete the cube there. If I want to bring that uh, bottle in that all visuals for you has made, I 
go to File, Import, and I choose the STL format. This is uh, this WRL is also the VRML 2.0 that we have um, talked about earlier in this video. So I'll choose STL, and I'll go to you know whichever folder that my bottle is in, and double click on it, and we've imported the bottle into Blender. As you can see, this bottle is huge. So I want to size this down to something that's a little bit more realistic. Uh, this is because, you know, there's scale differences when you import and export. So in order to get this right, um, I'm going to move my mouse to the edge of my graphics display and push on the S key, S like Sierra. And this is for scaling it down so I can uh, move my mouse closer and closer to the origin. And then I can click when I'm done and I can scale it even a little bit more if I wish. And that is how I can import this object into Blender. Likewise, I can move this object using the uh, origin that you can see. Blue is for the z-axis, green is for the y-axis, red is for the x-axis. So I can move this into a position that satisfies me. Uh, with that being said, I think that's probably a good stopping point to have you go ahead and play with Blender and some of the things that you see. Join me in the next video where we talk more about this user interface and how to get a render that we can be happy with. I'll catch you in the next video.